Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Yeah, big uh, Thanksgiving Eve show. Man, do I love that Thanksgiving. Yeah, me too. Did, you know, I, I was on uh, here in K-Rock with Nicole before we were on the air, and she was taking inventories and things she was thankful for. And, you know, it doesn't seem like this year people are a little more sort of thankful or taking note or more, thank, you know, more festive. Um, See that way? Eh, maybe whenever I don't know. Whenever there's a first off, I think we say that every year. I, I no, no, I, I've never said that. I don't remember saying that anyway. All right, and then secondly, uh, I don't know wartime. That's what I, don't I know, think. Election, right? I, I, that's it, what I think. It just feels very like we've been through a stressful, scary time. Yeah, and people are thankful for like having health and their family being together. And oh, yeah. thank the, you very much. The basic things yeah. are suddenly being made note of i think when, when do you by the way as a human being uh when does thanksgiving overtake christmas and then uh then i what you have kids and it goes back again In college forget kids yeah. for a second take them out of the equation when does when does thanksgiving college. overtake college you yeah. say yeah 19 20 19. why because you're not being taken care of by any anymore, you wouldn't dare accept. You know, look forward to gifts from people who are. Well, safe. you don't. You and, didn't but, have any but, money. But on the other hand, well, they wouldn't give you any gifts anyway. But the, on the other hand, you're looking forward to sort of seeing people. Yeah. Having an excuse to kind of gather with people and get a break. Right. And the Christmas break was often not about Christmas. It was sort of more about January. Uh -huh. College Christmas breaks go like three, four weeks sometimes. Uh, all right. Well, college. So uh, college aside, uh, you'd say about eighteen or nineteen. Yep. Or you're going to work, and who the hell's going to give you a gift then anyway? Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. I, I was I was talking to someone about that today, which is you start looking forward to the uh, food, the food and, and, the, and, and the, the relaxation and the, yeah. and the uh, fellowship, yeah. and a little less of the uh, buying me. someone a crappy uh, you know fruit basket <laughs> right. or something. And then uh, if you're a Corolla, you're the whole present thing is uh, woo. I was so way, I, I woke up uh, showering this morning, thinking to myself, I gotta stop by Adam's house on on Thanksgiving Eve just to behold, yeah, just to take in the Corolla affair. Come on down, buddy. I really I want to I want to just t taste it. Yeah, you have a, you'll you'll have a nice laugh. My dad introduces himself to you. <laughs> <laughs> Swear you two had never. But met. finally, it's gonna be on your territory, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gonna be uh, gonna be awesome. I just gotta, you know, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna light off a concussion grenade at uh, eight o'clock straight up. <laughs> get get everyone out. the hell out of there. <laughs> Let's go. I gotta get drunk. I gotta decompress. What time is starting? I gotta talk to Lou. Uh, I talk to my wife for four hours about what a holes you are. We gotta get you out of here. <laughs> oh, you're poor. Let's wife. go. Let's go. No, none of my. It's, Does your wife, it, by the way, appreciate that uh, I take some of that off for her? Not. No, she no, doesn't know. No. She doesn't care. Yeah. None of uh, I'm not, I'm not going to have a lot of my uh, my blood family there. Oh, I have a fair amount of like in law step family there. Oh, they're nice. Yeah. Oh no, they're regular. No, they're they'll appreciate what you have to offer. Oh, they're good. They're regular people. But your sister, not Corolla. Your, your sister will be there. Sister will be there. Your dad will be there. She's fine. My dad. Mom. Nope. What? Ba ba ba. Ba ba ba. No, my mom travels every every year. What? Oh yeah, my, so my grandmother. The my story my I've grandmother never heard. goes and uh, hangs out with the uh, Jews in like Oceanside uh, every year, and uh, my mom travel. I've seen my mom on Thanksgiving for twenty five years, and the same with my grandma. I've never seen her. Everyone, everyone goes. Well, here's the whole thing. Speaking of uh, Thanksgiving, my fa my parents got divorced when I was about seven or eight, and because they're such uh, idiots, they couldn't actually stomach seeing each other they couldn't physically see each, each other, other or be in the same proximity of of each other which is which is bizarre because they're, it, it's sort of like saying uh a, a piece of driftwood and a sterno log can't sit in the same basket together like my dad i haven't even the, the guys the guys strung together a sentence in 22 years he can't be around my mom who won't get out of the room and stop yelling freak out are, <laughs> but, but are you kidding but but thanksgiving became your dad's holiday 
Yeah, it just started it because his. because okay. he remarried yeah. and he he married someone who was sort of uh, they're human. sane human. or human. Mm-hmm. My my family's sort of uh, unhuman, and so they had like turkeys and you know they did normal Humanoid things. Activities. People put sweaters on yeah. and ate cranberries like humans. My, but, but they ate the, the cut cranberry sauce, uh, the Jello. Well, yeah. that's uh, that's humanoid. Humanoid. They were humanoid. Yeah. Yeah. And then a couple of years back, got PO'd uh, when I uh, decided uh, that I had an ass full of the honey baked ham, and I wanted some turkey. And I got up, went to Gelson's uh, about four thirty in the afternoon, went down to the deli park, came home with a turkey breast <laughs> in the middle of the dinner. Uh, by the way, you got to sound off when you're not <laughs> having turkey. You know, yeah. I got to, I got to, I got you got to fly the no turkey flag. Like, hey, you don't say, yeah, come on over for Thanksgiving, and then you arrive and like, yeah, we're going ham. Yeah. Uh, Mm. I, I've I've been I've been prepping for turkey for like four days now. Oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm on like a dark meat binder. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. I I need I need dark meat, and, yeah. and they're like, oh yeah, we want with the honey baked. Yeah. All right, I'm I'm get I'll be, be back. right back. I'll be back in twenty minutes, and I might pick up some cranberry while I'm gone too. So uh, yeah, so anyway, I've never I've never spent Thanksgiving with my mom, my grandma, just uh, my dad, but then it's, it's the step family. My uh, sister come around, bring the nephews. Oh, she's coming to us. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, love those nephews. You know why? Children, so innocent. So they've done nothing. Huh. They get the good stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. The rest, I got some, uh, got a little, Sam's little got something in his sack for the rest of the family. Yeah, Just I, love, sh- uh, mm-hmm. I love my nephews. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm in love with him. No, I mean, I really love him. I like to have sex with him. Uh, you missed my point. You right. Just don't make sure they don't break into the bunker. You make sure the lockdown is in effect. No, oh, okay. the laser, the laser uh, don't worry. security. Don't the, worry. The facial, the retinal scans and all that. Don't worry. They'll, they'll, they'll not get into the porn and, department. And, and by the way, by the time those guys are 14, they're going to be wearing little latex thumbprint. Uh, My nephews? Yeah. They're going to be taking, they're going to be handling your utensils, getting a print out and oh, rolling those, it into the. Those end. guys. My, my nephews. First off, they have an uncle who's literally a millionaire. Literally. I'm going to buy them cars. Oh. They're having a good time. Ugh. Yeah, my uncle like lived at home in Philadelphia with his eighty-year-old mom. <laughs> I don't think my, I don't think my <laughs> uncle had a car. Ooh. Let's uh, put it that way. Everyone needs an uncle that's got a little something going. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a little guy, horsepower, a little something, a little something. You know what I mean? Well, it's good. Your sister got a connection. That. Oh, maybe you know. You know what you need? Everyone needs like an uncle that owns a restaurant or That'd something like that. You know, little little something. Into something, into some cars. Got a little yeah. something going on. Got like a workshop or yeah. something. A little something. A stranger, you got all that. Oh well. You got oh, a workshop. God. You got oh, a car. You got oh. a restaurant. Oh my God. Oh, you're, oh those. Kids. Oh, your nephews are doomed. Those kids doomed. Oh, just don't. They just they just can't cross me. Just, <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Melanie. Yeah. You're 19. Yes. What's up? Okay. Um, I'm 19 and I'm dating this guy. He's 25 years old. And we've been together for like a year. And mm-hmm. I was on the Depp Rivera shot. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's birth Hold on a second. Let me say this one thing. People must think, like, uh, boy, I've heard Adam calls Dad a pussy like 400 times on the radio. Uh, I've heard him say horrible things about his mom. Where must they live that they don't have radios? I mean, th- this. Uh, could you imagine the wave us on this kid? Calls his dad a pussy and then he's going to see him, uh, you know, in uh, 17 hours at Thanksgiving? Uh, this is uh, part of the reason I'm free to speak about uh, my family. Is no one's ever heard this radio show. I've never heard it. I mean, there's no, there's no way. There's no, there's no circumstances under which uh, any any family member would ever listen to this radio show. Or if I'll put a finer point on it: uh, have been up later than nine fifteen in the evening. And would they hear something? Their friends tell them stuff once in a while. Your grandmother, anyway. That's it. Well, that yeah. My grandma, my my the, the beauty of uh, my mom, and my dad's. They have no friends. Oh, good. Okay. And there's well, a few. Oh, good. No, I l- listen. Let's put it this way, uh, Drew. You could uh, we could do a whole scenario where you said uh, Adams uh, had a seizure. My yeah, God, yeah. he swallowed his wallet. Right. Chris, uh, get the uh, call nine one one. In which case, uh, Chris would uh, probably uh, kibitz with some uh, carts for a little while. Just stage of death. Just stage stuff, of death. And then eventually go call call 911. He's probably say after the next break. Yeah, it has to make it realistic. Right, right. Stage of death, it could all it could all go down on the radio. They yeah. wouldn't, they'd it'd be fine. Yeah. 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 I, let me tell you, it's liberating. Yeah. It really is. Nice. We're talking to Melanie? It's Melanie. Melanie. Okay. Melanie. See, Melanie. Drew, oh. Drew's wife listens to the show. 
And that's is, tough. Is listening a fair description? She monitors. monitors she monitors the show. <laughs> she, 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 that's right. She monitors the show. And uh, although, she, by the way, I'll remind you, has been a Corolla fan for a little she's while. Been a, she's been a good woman. She's, she's been, been a good woman. Yeah, that's right. Now, I, I'm, saying, I'm saying this. Uh, there are many things that you could say that could be misconstrued and, and it could hurt feelings, and especially when uh, your feelings are, are delicate, like on your wife and uh, many, many wives and parents and moms and things like that. So the, the point is, is you do have to pussyfoot a little bit, you know, not, not have to lie, but you just, you know. Just you got, preserve people's feelings. Yeah, to preserve people's feelings, but when you're Corolla. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Melanie. Yeah. Obviously, we know what Depo Provera is, please. So go ahead. What what about that, bro? Okay. Anyway, I was on that Rivera, and it made me feel it made me feel real sick. So I started taking the or use. Oh, this is great, Melanie. All right. Oh, All right. For let's God's uh, sakes. let's keep on keeping on. Enzo. Yo. Yo. What's happening, Dad? Big Ferrari fan? Uh, no. Actually, yeah. There you go. What kind of Ferrari you're talking about? The Enzo. Well. Yeah. It's okay. Just, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's up, Enzo? Um, I wanted to know what's the recipe for your cranberry sauce. Listen to last night's show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Engineer Anderson, who I can never tell if is being heard on the air or not, uh, said listen to last night's show. But uh, he's calling from Phoenix, so he missed last night's show. Yes, Drew? Mm-mm. No? Well, yes. he missed. Yes, he missed it. Right. He's not going to. If he didn't listen, he would have missed it. Correct. That's right. So yeah, listen, let's... Enzo. Yeah. Uh, um. I am going to uh, give you the cranberry recipe. One sack, a uh, 12-ounce sack of uh, loose cranberries. 12 ounce? 12 ounce. That's what's in there. Oh, interesting. Fresh, fresh, loose cranberries. Organic. Yeah, don't, they don't have to be organic. Just oh, okay. raw. Yeah. Oh, they got to watch out with those fresh. pesticides. <laughs> Drew, you ever, you ever feel tired when you get up in the morning? Yeah, strangely enough. Yeah, you know what goes on? What happens? Toxins build up in your body. Oh, tell me more. Yeah, let me give you an enema. It frees you up. It makes you feel better. Do you understand? Drew, let me explain something. Your body is like a sponge. Really? Okay? And what you put in your body. What's a sponge like? Well, I'll tell you what the sponge does is, is gathers things and uh -huh. hangs on to it. Okay. And uh, you, you, we, we live in a toxic environment. Toxic. A lot oh, of to oh, the air. sounds scary. Air. You see, ever see there? Like I said, the water you drink. Toxic. Toxic. Okay. The the meat you eat meat is very toxic. toxic. The food so if it's is toxic. toxic. It must be full of toxins. It's full of toxins. Toxins must be toxic. Toxins. It's toxic. They, they must right. be. They They're must toxic. be. So what happens? Same word, right? Must be the same thing. You toxin, eat all toxic. That stuff and you pass the the stuff that that's not bad, but the toxic stuff stays in you. It builds up. I get like a, a mucus ever, shunt yeah, in my yeah, bowel. Yes, shunt in your bowel. You ever see uh, like an old pipe, like fifty year old sewage oh. pipe? There's oh. all that plaque and <gasps> stuff built up. <gasps> that's what it. You ever feel tired in the morning? <gasps> you, ever, you ever feel like you want to take a nap about three in the <gasps> afternoon? <gasps> you ever feel like you can't find the right word or focus? Oh my God. Okay, that's toxins. <gasps> okay, <gasps> now hold on. I can flush. We have to flush those toxins oh. out, like a car radiator. Ah. You have to flush it out every Ooh. once in a while. Okay, so what I'm going to need you to do is bend over. <laughs> okay, right now for me. <laughs> Could you go ahead and? Uh, okay, well, uh, how about the? Uh, Don't look at me. How about the uh, highway patrolman uh, who does enemas? Hey, so it's like, uh, uh, okay, what well, I need, need you to do for me uh, right now is go ahead and uh, drop your uh, trousers, okay, right now. And uh, what I'm not going to need you to do is I'm going to have to, at this point, I'm going to have to ask you to go ahead and drop your underpants right now and go ahead and spread your brown cheekies right now, okay, <laughs> for me right now. That's what I need you to do. <laughs> then I'm going ahead and uh, put some water soluble lube on this uh, this uh, prod. I'm going ahead and uh, force up your rectum, okay, right now. <laughs> I, I think I think if a guy was did enemas and it would be <laughs> highway patrolman during the day, uh, enema administer at night. I think that's what it would sound like. Yes. Yes. All right. So Drew, but you do you feel toxins built up oh, in your body? Oh my god, uh, that's toxins. You got to get an enema. You feel so much better. You feel so much better. All right. I can't wait. Then I'm gonna need you to fast. Yeah. And I'm gonna need you to uh, drink this uh, stream water with just a little bit of cayenne pepper and some uh, molasses <laughs> in it. All right. <laughs> Flushing, you got to flush. The you toxins cleanse. will be. You got to detoxify. The toxins, the toxins that are toxic will come Deto out. Of it. Detoxify, detoxify. Oh okay. You know how sometimes you eat a huge meal and you feel like taking a nap. Yeah. Yeah, those are the toxins. <gasps> it's red meat. 
I can feel what, what I'll do when I eat some red meat. I'll initially I'll spike. I'll go up. I'll go, then I'll start to bottom out. I'll start oh to bottom God. out. That's the oh, red meat bottom right out. Now. Bottoming oh, out. Are you I'm bottoming? Awful. I'm tired. Yeah, I get a white sugar bottom out too. First I ride the hot, <laughs> then I bottom out. I'd love to take these nut jobs and not tell them what they ate. Somehow just right. force something. They've in done it. Those studies have been done. Of course, They've they would know the difference between goddamn carrot puree and a Big Mac up their ass. The things that kills me more than anything. Idiots. That because they've never studied biochemistry, because they've never studied physiology, because they don't understand how complex it is, they don't even have the faintest idea about what the term toxin would be, were it to be poisonous to the Listen, system, Drew, what here, that would have to be, how I, that works, how I, the body I, takes for, care first of those off, things. They don't think anyone dies of cancer, by the way, without uh, living in a lo, you know, love canal or uh, Well, they die of cancer because the, the doctor gives them those poisonous medicines and that makes them Yeah, high. it's the environment. Yeah. The environment poisons yeah. you. Yeah. And then somehow the people that never get cancer, the environment missed them? Or how when you die work? at 90, what do you die of? Uh, well, the man, uh, toxins, I, yeah. <laughs> toxins build up. I don't, yeah. Your dune buggy flips over. Uh, that's a Jeff Frost joke. <laughs> here's, my, here's, here's my point. Do you realize, you know, you know there's like how, how there's 70% of society that uh, like uh, believes in ghosts and, yeah. you know, 40% believes in fairies and uh, 30% believes Elvis is still alive. 90% believes your body stores toxins. Uh, yeah. I but, really do mean that. Yes, yes, but... And, what, what, you and, ask any of them what a toxin and is. And believe that yeah. you, you need to flush the toxins out yeah, every once this, in a that's while. Such a, that's such a primitive, bizarre concept. It's, uh, it's, I first work, of all, your colon... I work with people that are, that are uh, Ivy League educated who and buy they believe that stuff. crap. Yes. They, never, they never studied science. The, the, the uh, colon is outside the body. That's like flushing your skin. Right. It's flushing your skin. Right. If you had a piece of Duke on your hand and mm -hmm. you washed it off, uh, that's what you've just done when you cleanse your colon. Uh, talk about coincidence. Uh, actually. No, I, I don't mean on your nails. I mean oh, on, okay. on your palm. All right. All right. But you do You do sometimes wake up in the morning and feel like you'd like sleep for another 20 minutes? Oh, yeah. Uh, toxins. Huh? Toxins. Chris. Well, no. Chris gets up at 1130. <laughs> that's right. He's got but that's first, why he gets to get up so late. Class at noon. Right. Yeah. You know, you would get up. You'd be doing calisthenics at 6 o'clock six, six if your body wasn't riddled with toxins. In the morning? That's right, <laughs> buddy. Oh, God. I know, because you go to bed at 530. Right. After pulling off a hat trick. Oh. I don't know if your mom knew what you were doing just now. <laughs> Cry her eyes out. <laughs> Such a hard worker, working, proud woman, right. too. Let's talk to Enzo some okay. more. Enzo. Uh, you see what you triggered there, buddy? Sorry. You awake? You got yeah, me going. All right, so the cranberry good. recipe. One, yeah. Uh, yeah, you got me going. One, uh, one sack of cranberries. Now, look, the the sack of cranberries will uh, tell you to put in one whole <laughs> cup of sugar, mm -hmm. but uh, don't do it. A little too sweet. Two thirds. Two thirds. You How can about the Splenda? Can you use a little Splenda on there? Wow! What an True. idea, huh? Now you're thinking. Yeah, but then that's going to be tough to calculate. If you're going to do, do that, figure. Well, do an experiment, please. I would love to know. you the little Splenda. dietary. Little Splenda. It would be awesome. Yeah, but Drew. I love Splenda. Yeah, but it's made from chemicals, and those chemicals build up in your body, and they cause a plaque, and then what ends up happening is you get cancer. More toxins. Okay. Or toxins. It's toxins toxin, store in your body. Toxin, the yeah. bomb. Yeah. You know how sometimes you're trying to think of something, like you were like, oh, I was going to say something, and then I forgot? Hmm. Splenda. Enzo? Yeah. One cup of water. Uh -huh. One bag of... Fresh cranberries. Boil up that water with uh, with that sugar and a little Splenda in there. If uh, you want to do like Drew, and then put the thing, and then put the lower the flame. Put the put the lid on the pot. Mm -hmm. Get yourself some beautiful cranberry relish. Sit, sit for what, ten minutes. And, and, and let, yeah, just let it let it stew there for really five minutes. So they stir it or It's done. It, it's done. <coughs> and Enzo, I'll tell you the other thing too. Because uh, everyone in this country is such an idiot, and they go for the can opener immediately. When you make this thing, you are the bell of the ball. Right. People are like, oh my goodness, gourmet. Oh, and they're like, out of the way with the cram, out of the way with the stuffing and the turkey and the green beans. Look at this. Somebody made some beautiful cranberry. It seems so complicated and so right. involved. Right. You you get you get huge credit for really something that's uh, next to nothing. Yes, perfect. All right, let's uh, let's talk to Jimmy. Gave me a pillowcase size. Sack of cranberries. How are you uh, this year? Just measure one for one water. Uh, 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 um, did the math for the old lady. Had her cook it up. You know uh, what I'm saying, but it's yeah. basically a cup of cranberry, a cup of water, a cup of sugar. It's one to one to one per twelve ounces. But if but Jimmy brought me a a sack uh. that uh, had to use a uh, pallet jack to get uh. this thing into my house. Nice. Yeah, I mean it's a big. It's was so, it, was that there was they were to, so effing tired of hearing you talk about cranberries and want to shut you up. No, because they, <laughs> I'm a dear friend. That's why. <laughs> 
No, because uh, Jimmy shops at at you know the the, the Costco or the yeah. Price Club or whatever it is. Stuff doesn't come any smaller. Yeah. You know, you have your choice between getting a seven hundred pound sack of cranberries or one cranberry that's five hundred and fifty pounds I that you can actually roll out have, your car. I've rolled out that cranberry once in a while. All right, let's uh, let's talk to Miranda. Miranda. Hi. Twenty four. Hi. Hold on. And in here, Chris. What do you do? Uh, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm gonna hang out with my family. Yeah. Which one? Which part? They're they're together? Well, my, Separate? No, my mom's family. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. You do? Uh, they do the they do the cranberries. They do fresh cranberries. Yeah. They do. Yeah. No. They do flan. No, they do. They flan. do everything. Flan. 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 No. Oh, Italian. No. She's the Italian. She's yeah, Italian. Dad's Mexican. A, mom's Italian. How could it be a Mexican Thanksgiving? Uh, I have. Uh, well, I, I guess you get. You do it at like one in the afternoon, then you get drunk and you fall asleep. <laughs> and that's how you do Mexican Thanksgiving. Lots of Coronas. <laughs> you take some shots. Your mom's Italian, it. though, right? Yes. That's yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. So she can cook the uh, cranberries, all right? Yeah. All right. And you do you do the Either turkey? Her or my aunt? You do the turkey. You don't do the ham. Yeah, no, the turkey definitely. Turkey, yeah, good, the ham. good for you. Yeah, I got some more. Uh, I got more. Uh, I got more tips. More respect. More thanks- I got more Thanksgiving tips. Oh, nice. We, we got to keep going, but uh, just remind me. Oh yeah, Miranda. Yeah, I will. Hi. What's up? I have a question. I Mm -hmm. had a second trimester abortion, and after I have my period now... Hold on, that was plaque. Plaque building up her uterus. Yeah, Yeah. I know. I created a toxin for myself. (laughs) That's what happens. Well done, Miranda. Well done. I know. So so go ahead. But but now, an abortion question. Might the Chief Thunderbear be useful in this? Mm. Wait till after the break? It's pretty sensitive. I can go get him. He might have... I know he feels very strongly about abortions. We haven't had to wait through... He's not. He's pro papoose. He's pro papoose, and we might have to uh, wade through some of that. But yeah, uh, all right, let me get him. All right, you want to do after the break? Yeah, uh, he he gets. He's been leaving earlier. He gets angry. Right. I, I saw him. Um, he actually uh, shot a flaming arrow at the Tetris uh, machine. He was playing out oh, in the jock lounge. He's yeah, angry. he was wow. angry. He's angry that uh, Jed the fish beat him. <laughs> <laughs> he cursed him. Hold on, let me go get him. All right, Miranda, we're going to get the uh, right, me... the American Indian. Gynecologist for you, okay? Here he comes, Chief Thunderbear. You there, Miranda? Come on out, Miranda. Uh oh. Oh, Chief. Chief, Chief. Relax, buddy. Uh, Miranda, our caller, I believe has hung up. She was very intimidated by your presence. Yeah, Jackie. Yeah, and that Jackie, a big teddy bear. I know you like. Yes, I know. You're 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 a harmless guy, and you like women with large breasts. I know. You said that before. Miranda. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, Miranda. Well, what oh. the hit chicky, I know, huh? I know she... What, is it going to call? Well, yeah, I know, K- I know. K- yes, we interrupted Tetris. the Tetris game. I'm sorry, what I'm K- sorry. K- no, I understand, I understand. But uh, Chris, 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 you know what's coming. Me. So. Okay. Hey, 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 Oh, he's, you've really got him this time. He's calling all the gods to help him. Oh, Chris, he's, he's cursing you. I've never heard him. Junior college. Oh, no, Chris, he's going to. Chris, you will be. St- oh, my God. This is Chris. He is cursing. He is cursing you. He is cursing all junior college students that they should never leave the confines of the walls of their facility. Except to, choke on stuffing. Except to play hacky sack. Oh my God! And he's also wishing you ill tomorrow with Thanksgiving. Chief, chief, it's Thanksgiving. Give, give him a few positive strokes, will you? Please. Yeah. Uh, I know. Well, he didn't cause the girl to hang. Out. We'll get another one. We'll get another one. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, let's get a gynecology question. Give me one second to see what Dean is calling about here. One second. <laughs> Chief, Chief. That, that's a, that's a commercial from the seventies. I, yeah, I, well, I know, I know, I know that. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Uh, yeah, your people, yes. No, no. okay. Uh, resi- oh, here resi- we go. Residual. Here we go. Yeah, no, yes. okay. yeah. Chief, we have, a, we have one for you. Mm-hmm. This is Dina, who is twenty. Yeah, hey, Dina. Yeah, Dina. Oh, hey, hey, Chief, uh, great you. Uh, hey. You are on the love line mm-hmm. with Chief Thunderbear, mm-hmm. the American Indian gynecologist, only Choctaw speaking. I'll yeah, try yeah. to translate for you, Dina. Well, I was just wondering, how do you give oral sex to someone who's a hermaphrodite? A hermaphrodite. Hey, uh, hey, what in the hey? Okay, hey, hold chop, on. Chop dong off with tomahawk. Okay. Hey, in the ticket. Chief, uh, Chief is, first of all, uh, saying a prayer for your soul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, secondly, he is um, has a colleague. Mm-hmm. His name? The colleague? The- hey, Chief. 
Chief No Groin. So, Chief, yes, Chief No Groin, who uh, does sex change operations or, or mm-hmm. sex gender assignments. Yeah, so why would you want to change it? You've got, like, the best of both worlds going there. Well, what do you got? What are you talking about? What? Hey. I mean, well, you know, being a hermaphrodite. Well, hermaphrodites... Um, there's really mm. true hermaphroditism is extremely rare. It's probably not what you're dealing with. What, mm. what is the situation? Well, you know, like it's kind of both female it's, and male. Mm. Mm-hmm. He's somebody who has a, a vagina and a penis. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. TP and peace pipe. TP and peace pipe. That's mm-hmm. correct, Chief. Mm-hmm. A- and is it because he or she, is it a he or a she? Yeah. Hey, it's both. Brave no, no, or squaw. Dana, Dana, Brave or squaw. It's not both. Brave or squat. Okay, it's a girl. It's a girl. Yeah. With with is this somebody who's been on steroids? Mm-hmm. Oh no no not at all. Mm-hmm. And so it's a girl with testicles also. Oh oh day oh. Okay, chief chief. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon, chief. I, oh, hey, chick, I, I know I've offended the gods. I'm sorry. Chris, bring the coffee. Bring the coffee. Just coffee. eat a pemmican yeah, and yeah. fried salmon. Now you bring up. Well, so she's right sorry, here. Chief. You want to talk to her? Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Hold on, we will take we'll take a little yeah. break here. Chief's got to re, re, re uh, coop himself. Well, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go down hallway for Twix. Yeah, yes, we'll have some yeah, yeah. Twix. We'll see, we'll have some peace pipe. Smoke a peace pipe. Mm. I'll, 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 I'll explain to you about Dean. Hey, and come back. News question. and weather. <laughs> Thank News you, and traffic and weather. And we'll be back with more love line. Eight eight twenty nine twenty nine <laughs> after eight o'clock. Your English is getting very good. Hey, I, don't, okay. I don't need to translate. Yeah. Tetris. I don't need to translate anymore. Yeah. You're yeah, perfectly yeah, good. Yeah, English. Yeah, no, yeah, I have to translate. All right, all right, chief. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll throw it to commercial, as you say, chief. Okay. Okay. The number here is one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Adam will be back in a second. We'll finish up with Dina and her alleged hermaphrodite after this. Hello. This is your radio. Love line will be right back. Love Line is brought to you by Playboy. The December issue of Playboy on newsstands now is loaded with the College Hoops preview and the annual music poll. You might not even notice the Denise Richards pictorial. Yeah, hey, Love Line, hey, hey, hey. Chief Running Bear, Dr. Drew, hey, ho, hey, hey, uh, hun, 800, hey, 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 well, they don't call it. What? Well, watch it. Okay, uh, Chuck, they'll reach around. Hey, what? Okay, uh, happy ending. I said stick it. with the Chuck. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, hey, now what? Hey, like, okay, you okay, like you could be offended. Well, hey, what can it? It's a hermaphrodite. Okay, yeah, hey, Woodland Hill. Well, I have a Corolla. Yeah. I thought he was coming back here after that. Well, yeah, yeah, no. Okay, yeah. Well, in the hall, all right. Hey, okay. Hey, you want to get him? Yeah, well, you might not. Hey, get looking in mirror masturbating. Hey, hey, what? Hey, get you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hey, yeah. Dana. Dana. Dina. Yeah, can so, can you get pregnant from a, from that? Well, what do you mean, hermaphrodite? We're not. If she's a female and she has female organs, you'd yes, knock, you can get knock pregnant. Knock self up. Give self squat. Also a penis. No, there's not also a penis. There's not. There's not a functioning penis. There would not be testes. You don't have ovaries and testes. So what do we got yeah, here? I do. You do. Well, no. But can yeah. I get pregnant? Hold on. Hey, oh, one the crazy bitch. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, this isn't making sense. Hey, strung out on drugs. Hey, what? Well, Probably. Drink them. You're right. Hey, yes. Drink them. Yeah. Drink them. Drink them. Fire water. Let me let me discuss. Eat them. Peyote. Yes. Currently, but just bef- before you speak, Chief, I'm going to try to clarify for mm. this in English. Dina. Yeah. Who are we talking about here? We're talking about a friend of mine. A friend of yours. And yeah. what is she? If there's something called testicular feminization. No. Oh. There's something called ambiguous genitalia. Oh, yeah. Hey, chief. Uh, and hey. there's hermaphroditism, but well. that is really rare. So, well, and what? So, what do we got here? Well, now I'm all confused. Right. Obviously. But, but how did you meet this person? Why don't you send me some emails? No, huh. Hey, no, no, okay. no, no. Oh, the chief well, is a chief is yeah, scared. No, no, chief is a a junior yeah, college. Hey, oh, no, hey. Well, you a chief I, I had, like, tell you that way. Why don't we email you? 
No, this isn't working out, Dina. However, because the chief has picked up on a certain junior college Dana, sent here, email, and earlier... You send us www.kissass.com. He had earlier set a curse upon the, the world. It was mm. directed towards Chris, but it got more general because he was so upset. No way. Hey, no coffee. No I coffee. Still no coffee. And uh, it, it, it requires, it's going to require now that people that are in junior college will remain in junior college. Mm. It's mm. right eternity. Oh, uh, the yeah, ancestors go yeah. and yeah. die and run yes. with Buffalo yes. and still, and still it's college. Snack Shack. Yes. Still yes. play Hacky Sack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah K1 uh, Corolla. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, let's bring uh, Corolla back in. You can play with Tetris. Relax. Play Tetris, we'll they, call you in a few more minutes. Jet thank fish. you, Chief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your chat will be, chat will be hey. fine in the morning. You can leave the headsets here, Mr. Mr. Yeah, yeah, Chief. Okay, Chief. Yeah, All right, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, get rid of this guy. Coral is a significant improvement, believe it or not. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, buddy. Good job. All right. Oh, man. Wow, it was a long segment. It was. He was getting, he's getting a little wacky on us. <clears throat> Oh, he's, start, he's starting. To, he's learning a little English, and he's uh, using mm. sort of weird. Oh, he's, yeah, he's watching. I think he's. I think he's been watching a lot of TV. I got him a What's TV. He watching. Uh, I guess he's, he's watching. Days. He's watching American TV. They don't have any Chuck now. Wow, Chuck Dust station. He's getting. He's. He's like. Uh, he's a disturbing guy. He's picking right. up some English. I didn't hear. I was listening to Era. Oh yeah, it's down the hall. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to kill yourself now? Yeah. <laughs> I heard Band of the Bone. <laughs> Play that that twenty six hundred times a day. Yeah. We need to hear that song again. Hey, uh, instead of Bad to the Bone, uh, how about we hear a song uh, we never hear, like uh, Hotel California. There's one. There's a great song. She, or uh, Legs by ZZ Top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wouldn't you love just to hear that song? Yeah. Wouldn't you? Let me tell you something. If I was driving in my car and uh, the song uh, Hot Legs by uh, Rod Stewart or Bad to the Bone came on or Hotel California or... Uh, Witchy Woman by uh, Eagles. By the Eagles, and, or any Eagle song, or almost any Eagle song, <laughs> and you busted the knob off of my radio. You jump out the I car? Would, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, you okay, jump that's out an car. option. Yeah. Good. I was thinking I was just I was just drive off a cliff. No, you jump out the car. Yeah. Even I if they're, if they're you're like yeah, but damn, there's only like 15 seconds of the song. Now, I'm doing it on principle. I'm gonna drive into a telephone pole. But you're right. Do that thing where you roll. You know you don't see anymore. Uh, watching TV in the uh, in the 70s. About every other episode, everything he saw, someone rolled, someone did a shoulder roll out of a car. Someone jumped out of a moving or car. Or a motorcycle, or even an airplane, some helicopter. Yeah. No, no, you, you're, no, no you couldn't. No, no one did a shoulder roll out of a it helicopter. It seems like they, they, were, they were moving out of objects all the time. They were, objects they were jumping the off of stuff, but yeah. they were rolling off of cars yeah. constantly. Yeah. Stick with me. All right. they, uh, it would, not an episode of anything would go by without somebody having to jump free of their car. Yes. For some reason, the brake lines were cut, something had malfunction, and it wouldn't matter what you were watching. The sitcoms, yeah. uh, they'd have, a, sh have a, a community forum show called Let's Rap on Sunday morning. They'd have a chick with a huge afro would just roll out of the show while it was moving. Uh, it was nonstop jumping out of cars a and then jumping on the hoods of cars. Oh, yeah, sliding across the hoods kind of thing. <clears throat> yes, yeah. and... and uh, and by the way, where are these uh, miraculous uh, pyramids of empty, clean boxes and alleys that you could eventually be ejected into off the car hood? Yes. My guess is you'd probably uh, hit a bum, a syringe, or a sharp edge of a dumpster if you actually did ride on the hood or of a car. Or, 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 or just yeah. what you should hit yeah. in the alley. It's 99.9 .9, uh, brick, cement, yeah. asphalt. You'd probably catch one of the, sure. one of the above. I would probably catch like a... Uh, uh, galvanized plumbing clean out or something <laughs> on the side of the building, which just impaled me. Yeah. But it was always right into the boxes. And by and by the way, or the fruit or something. What's uh, it? <clears throat> I've uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but if someone's trying to get away from me in a car, uh, jumping on the hood never really ends up in them slowing down to a safe stop and me coming back and arresting. Them. Always ends up me getting thrown into the boxes. Has it ever worked out? Yeah. Uh. -uh. Why, why jump on the hood? I know. I, I don't even think it's a, it's an impulse. No. I, I, it, it would be great if you could stop them by jumping on the hood, but it never seems to work. You roll around for a while, and then you see a guy with the clear w stunt man. I like when you see the wig on the guy. And he gets thrown in the boxes, and then uh, the guy stands up, shakes his head. Are you ready to go here, Drew? Yeah. Uh, we, had, we had an American Indian who wanted to speak to you about Chief Running Bear. Where is it? Running, well, let's see, if we, wait, let's see if this is him. I thought we might have lost him. Hmm. Thunder Bear, I beg your pardon. Yeah. What'd you call him? A running bear. I kept calling him running bear, too. Yeah. I think he gets pissed. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's a subtle translational issue, running bear. Well, you know what bear. I do is I just call him Mr. Bear, and it kind of saves me. Uh, All right. All right. So uh, the American Indian want to talk to uh, Thunder Bear, Scott? All right. Andrew? Yes? 
16? Yeah. What's up, buddy? Turn the radio down. Turn it down. Turn it down. Uh, I, I got a, a question. I've been uh, dating a, a girl for about uh, a yeah. month and a half. Slow down here, Andrew. How old are you now? Uh, I'm 16. When was your birthday? Uh, it's March 7th, 1988. Yeah. 1988. Yeah. I don't believe you've been dating anybody. You're way too squirrely. Long time uh, listener, first time caller. I don't believe it's anything either. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Squirrely, buddy. I don't get 16. Yeah, you ain't 16 and you ain't dating. Or if he's okay. dating. All right, buddy. What, Sorry, it was, so a what, nice, it was a nice try. All right, that's all right. <laughs> Listen, you can't do that. <laughs> I've been dating. <laughs> No, it's guys, guys, turn down. <laughs> yeah, but way too squirrely sounding to me. He's not, this guy's not dating anyone. No. Well, he might be, but he's no, not, no, not, no, no, no. not getting anywhere. No, you don't, saying. guys that are su re real super squirrely sounding don't, don't. Uh, yeah, but what 14 year old doesn't sound like that? You know what I mean? <clears throat> he could be a studly 14 year old dating uh, somebody. Uh, a 14 year old is getting laid doesn't sound no, like I that not, at that's all. That's the point. He's not getting laid, but he could be seeing somebody sort of dating somebody. No, 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 no. no. Tony? Uh, yeah. How's it going? 23. What's up? Uh, I was just kind of curious. Um, on what levels is self-injury? Like, uh, like how bad is it? Or how, you know? It's a sign of severe psychiatric distress. Severe? Yeah. It means, it means you're overwhelmed by your feelings to the point that your brain tries to find some means to handle it. And a primitive means is to start to cut on yourself to try to feel better. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, like, I mean, you know, I mean, I've tried, like, you know, like, I mean, I have, like, a lot of, uh, I guess it would be anger built up just mm -hmm. from, like, different things. I mean, not just, like, you know, girls and all that stuff, but, like, not, like, just one little episode, but, like, just, you know, I think, like, stuff is built up. Mm -hmm. then, yeah, that's what I said. You get yeah. feel very heavy feelings that are overwhelming, and you have to find a way to manage them or release them, so to speak. You didn't say stuff and until so people up. will cut. All right, so Tony, how about a little therapy there, buddy? Or boy? they do drugs, or well, they act out. These yeah. are things that people do when they can't manage feeling states. Uh, how about... Yeah. Well, you said therapy? How yeah. about it? Well, I mean, I feel like I can't really talk to anybody. I mean, why? Like, why? I don't yeah. never really feel... I don't know. Well... If you want it, if you, you know, that's understandable since you've been abused badly growing up. But <clears> if <throat> on your own behalf, step oh, up. I mean, I've never been abused. No one ever hit you. No, huh? huh. You never hit. What do you do for a living? Well, oh, oh, or retail. All right, porn shop. No. Yeah, what do you What do you sell? <laughs> Me, just uh, propane. Do I? What do you sell? <laughs> propane. Just uh, what? Like I work at retail. One of the one of the major, like, you know, Walmart. 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 So. Oh, okay. Propane. Uh, uh, so this, listen. But Tony, look, you, you, there must have been something going up. You said there was a lot of anger built up, right? Yeah. What's the anger from? Uh, just, I mean, a, a lot. Of, just, I mean, I really don't know. Doctor. All right. We'll see. All right. All right. Look, <clears throat> I'm, I'm uh, putting Tony on hold because... Look, it's like if you call up and you say uh, something's wrong with my car, and they say, uh, "Well, what what what's the problem?" And you go, "Well, maybe the tranny, maybe the engine, maybe the rear end, maybe the uh, suspension." I just don't know. I just don't know. Uh, we're gonna take fourteen hours to get to anything. Look, you have feelings. Uh, they're angry feelings. You're gonna hurt somebody. You're gonna hurt yourself, or you're just gonna have a miserable life. Uh, how about working it out? There's uh, there's there are ways to get it treated, that but there's you ways must to do it. Yes. You have to be willing to trust somebody else. And take direction from somebody else because your great ideas are ending you up right where you are. That's right. All right. Should we take ourselves a little break, Drew? Sure. <clears throat> we'll be right back after this. Hello. This is your radio. radio. Love line. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Love line, ah. huge Eagles fan. We used to go out to a sports Here's your bar. Dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. All right, that's uh, Drew. Um, Adam, you ready to rock? Let's go. You know, the rest of the world gets two days off. Drew. Yeah, we get one day off. I'm working all the way through too. The hospital. Oh yeah. Except one well, day off from Love Line. So you're an idiot, but w we don't get uh, two days off. We just get tomorrow off. That's right. If you asked for it off, you could have got it off. 
No. Kind yeah. of sucks, yeah. No, because it's not, no. We should have got tonight off. No. Why not? It wouldn't happen because it's a book. It's a, it's a rating book. They don't yeah. let us do that. Yeah. I bet we could have done it. I should, we should just fake the injuries. Yeah, we could do that. Adam could have yeah. said he's just not coming in if they don't let him take the night off, and they would have said sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, Adam's a hard ass, though. Let me, let me explain to Adam. Adam's such a prima donna that he wants a, a security guard so he doesn't get a casa down in the street and uh, wants a, a workplace where he doesn't have to wade through uh, a rice paddy uh, from uh, Vietnam uh, in order to get to the front door of the dump uh, that he's uh, currently working in. And after about uh, six months of uh, kind requests, uh, Adam just eventually says he's not coming in, and that's how it works. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Prima Donna. Brian? Yeah, that's me. What's happening? Not too much. How are you doing? Good. How do you spell your name? B-R-Y-O-N. All right. Wow. Here's the whole thing, phone screeners. Ignore uh, retarded spellings uh, and just say... Uh, B-R-I-A-N. If a guy says his name is Brian, you spell it like Brian. Yeah. If he was, otherwise, I just look at it and I go Brian, right. Brian, Brian, Byron, Byron, Byron. And if, he, if he said it's spelled S-M-I-T-H, ignore Ignore yeah. whatever he says. Right, that's my point. What's happening, Brian? Not, not too much. What's going on? No, I, I thought I thought you guys were doing great, and Adam. I swear to God, you sound just like my grandfather. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's a uh, Choctaw gynecologist. <laughs> no, actually, he's an Indian that was in the Navy, but you know he tries to act, so it's pretty funny. And and does he does he does he do the American Indian voice for you? No, he doesn't do the American Indian voice, but he gets pretty. Sh oh, I'm sorry. Ooh. Yeah, gets pretty messed. Hold on a second. First off, uh, I'm shocked that American Indian would drink. That's <laughs> pretty yes, man. Well, first of all, we've not actually established that the guy's American Indian. It's a good. It's, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I didn't bring that up. <laughs> he, he said. Right. He, well, he listened to that line of conversation. It was so he, he gives the the American Indian voice. No, no, no. He just gets really uh, messed yes, up. Face. No, it says. Yeah, I'm sorry. It says <laughs> here that uh, the guy's uh, part American Indian. Brian. Yes. What kind of American Indian? Sue. Sue. Ooh. All right. Uh, and uh, and how and in your your grandfather's full blooded or half or what is he? Actually, my grandfather's full, so I'm a fourth. Fourth, yeah. Yeah. Is is that what uh, gives you your tenacity? A oh, something like that. Yeah. So what's Actually, what's happening? I'm a, I'm a Southern California guy. I have mm -hmm. no connection to my roots, like most of us. So, uh, <laughs> Good. Good. I just thought it, I thought it was hilarious what you guys were doing over there. Thanks, and, uh, buddy. Dr. Drew, I love the way you're playing along with it, man. You, you've you come so far, man. <laughs> it really has. It really has. <laughs> so, oh, Brian, thank you for that. Such a trivia. Yes, thank you. And look, everybody, <clears throat> I know everyone uh, likes to go <laughs> so nutty. Far. I like everyone likes to go nutty with the, uh, uh, you know, getting in touch with their heritage and their roots. And uh, everyone, yeah. every, everyone talks about how great it is and then secretly makes fun of it. Uh, I, I really, I'm not kidding when I wish that everyone would just drop that ass with their roots and their heritage and all that crap. I mean, just I mean, stop getting it. defensive about it. It, or it, just it, it just it causes division and wars and people get killed and uh, whether it's your religion or your roots or whatever. Everyone, all we do is applaud. Oh, you're getting in touch with. Oh, you're. Oh, please. You walk around your goofy hat. You go hang out with people uh, who are uh, one sixteenth whatever you well, are, and nice then sit to around have knowledge and, of yes. yeah, it, not not even. And then what ends up happening is you end up electing some guy, and he ends up wanting uh, to get your uh, you know language uh, stamped on uh, textbooks. And the next you know we got a uh, ass ass bucket we're all living in. Let's all just drop it. Don't forget about what you are. God so bless. Start rowing. God bless Brian. Yeah, right. Just forget what you are. Forget what your grandparents are. It's got nothing. You're American. Let's go. Here we go now. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it together. We got it. We got it. Here's the deal. Here's your gig. Uh, get a job. Fight to keep it. And let's see if we can uh, blow up some terrorists. <laughs> that, that's it. That's our job. You going over to the uh, such and such study center to find out more about, please. And by the way, those people ever get anywhere? Huh? Mm. You know the ones who put on the ceremonial garb and do the nonsense that whatever they did to prove it? No, no. no look, you, you're, everyone's forefathers, they weren't great people. Let's be honest. Mine were probably some of the lazy guineas, probably. Uh, probably. Had to be. Probably just got drunk and uh, fell asleep and died on farming equipment or something. <laughs> Idiots. Forget about them. Forget about your past. And look, here, here's the reason you're here, by the way. Wherever you're from, asshole. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. 
wherever you're from is at least worse than this, and and quite quite a significant quite well, significant. When, when your ancestors left, it must have been a lot worse than this. Yes, That's it's a, left. where you I mean, think about the forces and say whatever you want about to this make country. You, make your you place leave. you're from, dump. Now get it together. Let's go. You're an American, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Now I know the American Indians have had me on a technicality because right. they were here. Right. All right, but either way, let's go. <laughs> Buffalo's gone. TP's gone. Let's rock. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just, hey, you know, first off, you know, Los Angeles speaks like 152 languages, yeah. and everything's printed in 152 versions, and it's just everyone loves where they're from. Oh, they're beloved wherever you're from. Fill in the blank. It's a dump. You fled here. Let's face it. It's 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 not like uh, you came here to open a, a dentistry practice. You were an attorney where you're from and had to flee because uh, you know, the government was so corrupt and the sewer system was backed up and it's a dump. You came here because where you're from is a dump. Now stop pretending like where you're from is the world's greatest place and start focusing on this goddamn place. We're all Americans. That's what we should be giving thanks to. We got one common enemy. That's the terrorists and uh, the the uh, left hand turn signals. We don't two, need two those common. arrows. We have two common error, two common enemies, Drew, and that's it. Remember, keep in mind, you're, where you're from is a dump. Thank you. There you go. Let's go. You don't have to go there. You don't have to get in touch with anybody. And let's all stop being supportive. Oh, I went back to my native, and I went ahead, and I sat in the in the, uh, I sat on the uh, five gallon bucket my grandfather used to uh, dump in. Yeah. Oh, that's eh, that's fantastic. All right, just knock it off. You stay here. Or go back and visit and stay in your beloved Shangri-La, wherever that dump is. Yes? Yes. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know what I want you to start saying? What's up? Hi. <laughs> okay. Let's go to break. Hi. All right. Let's go to break. Yes, Chris? Hi. Hi. All right. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 This hour brought to you in part by Axe. Experience the Axe Effect. We're all talked out. Let's take a break. Let's play a song. Yeah, that was a, a good segment we had there. <laughs> Drew and I, but Drew it was and I, in the John. Drew and I talk so much in the toilet that we're actually parched now. We're on the air. I got cotton mouth and burnt out. My brain's empty. Uh, we let dance. We schmoozed. We got nothing. Carried on. Hey, phone number, everybody. 1 800 L O V E 191. Uh, Engineer Chris. Hey, what's up, man? I'm going to need you to take the next no, Chris, call. Chris, Chris, Chris. Hi. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> oh, he's sassy. <laughs> Listen, everyone here is sassy because no one gets paid. So it's like, you want to fire me? It's like being, it's like a warden threatening to throw you out of prison. Yeah, you want? I'll toss your ass, ass right, right, right out. out of that hole. Right out. You know, we share the toilet and the uh, four by nines. Yeah. Uh, you want to, you want out? I'll throw you out, mister. It's like, yeah, please do me a favor. Toss yeah. me out. Yeah. Uh, let me say this. Here's where I'm coming up with the uh, high thing. Um, I'm trying to get my uh, assistant to do it because, um, <laughs> God, don't you just go straight to Heil, your assistant. <laughs> Heil? Forget the high. All right, let's go. Heil. All right, I'll write that down. There you go. I'm going to say Heil. It's longer than high. Yeah, I know. We're well, going to break them into that. Here's the thing. I, when you're watching TV, once in a while, you come across one of those uh, Japanese shows. <clears throat> and it's funny. They're like, it's news or it's sports wrap-up or something. Yeah. Oh, you know what it is? In between the matches of uh, the sumo wrestling. They'll go to this place, but the Japanese are so bizarre. Like it doesn't look like a sports center or anything. It, it looks like there's like rice paper and like weird, uh, you know, caricature characters, Chinese you know, or Japanese. It letter, probably says sports things. center. That's what no, 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 no. It's just stuff. It's like a flower pot and yeah, you yeah. know some rice paper, and you're like. I don't know, you couldn't tell if it was uh, politics or religion or cooking. Everything is sort of... And there's two guys sitting there, and one guy's talking. He's talking a mile a minute, and the other guy's standing next to him. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey, which is, I agree, yes. No, actually, you're right. I love yeah, that, actually. It's, 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 it's instant, it's com yeah. it, but it's, it's confirmation yeah, yeah. all the time. It's, yeah. it's equivalent of, of feverishly yes. nodding yes. when someone's talking. Yeah, As opposed to Americans are like, I... I uh I, I I disagree. Right. I, I disagree. Right. No, no, I did no. You know, and then repeat no, the yeah. same thing. And then say the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, here's what I figured out. 
I figured out. I officially the other day, Drew. I don't know if I told you about this. I hit a little of a land, a little bit of a landmark. You know, you've uh, if we we spoke on the cell phone before, right? You and I, uh, yeah, yeah, every night. Yeah, we probably have thousands of hours logged on the cell yeah. phone. And as uh, Drew knows, I can get a little head of steam going. Yeah, on the cell phone. Yeah, and I can I can talk. Well, that's I, I like the way in fact presented the fact that you have spoke on the phone. Yeah. We haven't had a conversation. <laughs> you speak. No. Yeah. I, I yell at Drew yeah. via, via the telephone. It's yeah, really right. like an intercom. The, his it, it, side is broken. Right. Just a little, and I just yell yes, stuff at him. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I realized now Now the phone has cut out on us uh, well, 700,000 times. Yes. And, right. Because Every night. Uh, Los Angeles, not a big cell phone city. No, and so they can't have coverage. Why would they bother having coverage everywhere? Well, Especially downtown. I understand. I would understand if it was a city where people were in their car. Or use cell phones or invented or cell phones or, or something like or, that. Or yeah. there was, you know, there was, you know, was, there was some commerce uh, commerce going on yeah. or, or some business or, you know, that, you know if it, but it's not a big economy out here. People don't Especially spend time in their cars. Businesses conducted on the phone. No, 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 not LA. No, God, God damn forbid we have an extra couple cell towers. Anyway, nothing worse in Los Angeles. Cell phones cut out every five feet. Yeah. And I realize because I'm long-winded and I'm usually in the middle of the <laughs> diatribe, I talk for four or five minutes at a time before I realize there's no response. It should tell you something, by the way, Adam, that every time a phone's cutting out, it's during your speaking. I'm now starting to think people are hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's me point. The other day, I passed a milestone, oh, yeah. which was... Uh, I now have one year of nonstop talking with nobody on the other line. It's it's two two minutes here, thirty oh, seconds you've there, five year. minutes. Nice. It's it's actually that's, that's a, that's one a year of nonstop yeah. talking mm. with nobody on the other line. It's good. And I realized now now here's my I think problem. What missed. <clears throat> I uh, the pearls. Yeah, I got an assistant who uh, doesn't like responding when I talk. You know. Hi. So that's right. So. <laughs> I start talking, and I say, yeah, you got to go down to Far West Ply and pick Hi. up some of that CDX Ply, and there's, like, long beats, and I'm on the cell phone, and I'm like, hello? And he's like, yeah. I think he does it to piss me off. But the point is, is I start saying, you got to say hi. And not hi, how are you, but hey. Hey. After each thing. Now watch. We'll show you how this Here works. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Right? Well, try it. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, Drew, I'm going to I'm need to head down to Far West Ply, and I need to pick up some uh, CDX uh, good one side three-quarter mahogany. Hi. And uh, after that, I want you to swing by the cleaners. I got some dry cleaning over there. Hey. Need you to pick that up. Hey. And then uh, I'm going to need you. You know what? Um, I think my mom's uh, Christmas gift is uh, done down at the uh, S Palace. I'm going to need you to swing by there. Hey. You see? Is that working? Now, there's none of that. Hello? Hello? Did you hear me? And if you think about it, you know, they have this kind of talk in the military. There's the over and the yes, Roger yes, and sir. all that kind of stuff. No, but yeah. when they, when they yes, talk yes. via, right. not, not in got person. It. Just the airplane, too. They got it. Yeah, the, you have to. Or you repeat, by the way, in the airplane, you repeat the command, which right. I think is this what your guy ought to pick up on. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. But for now, the United hey. United 220, descend and maintain 1-2000. 1-2000. United 120 out. Hey! All right, so Engineer Chris, over here, bud. Engineer uh, Chris, he drifts off. Engineer Chris, I'm going to need you to uh, just answer with a, a very affirmative, hey, hey, yeah. Oh, he's good. That's good. And again, it's not the hi, how are you? It's the Japanese. No, it's oh, yes. Hi. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Oh. I, it's, I understand. Yeah, I got it. It's, it's sort of, ha think, uh, think busting a board with your foot while taking a crap. <laughs> okay. Ouch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey. <coughs> no. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Hey. All right. All right. So, uh, Engineer Chris, uh, later on... Hey. We're going to play Ranchero Countdown. Hey. And uh, so you're going to need to queue up for that. Right. Oh. 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 So close. And then, you know, when they up. don't respond, it's, 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 it's time to chop painful. the head off. Yeah. No, it's yeah. just, it's, it's brutal. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, huh? What? Insulting. Yeah. That's a slap in the face. You now have to kill yourself <laughs> in the name of the emperor. Jason? Hello? Yeah. You're 17? Hello? Yeah. Hey, yeah. um. Hey, Jason. Jason Drew? smokes way too much pot. Wow. You smoke a lot of weed. Hey! Hey! I mean, are you high? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, do Dr. Drew? Yeah, Jason. I got a question for you about a, uh, about a psychologist who did a study. His uh -huh. name is uh, Dr. Ron Levine. Hello? Yeah. Hi! hi. See? Uh, you see what happens? Uh, Drew, start doing a high I thing. I did it with you. We both did it. Yeah, but we're both delayed. <laughs> Go ahead, Jason. We'll Hello? try to do the high thing. Hi, I was, I'm wondering about a study. There's a Dr. Ron Levine. He's from in Van Nuys. Hi. Hi. He did a study that about fetuses. Hi. And, Hi. 
and he did. He said that in the fetuses, when they're in the in the womb, they've done ultrasound tests that say they masturbate. Hey, hey. And I was wondering if that's true. Hey, hey. Now, uh, listen. Uh, there's masturbating, and then there's masturbating. There's one thing that happens, particularly to human males, is that they touch their junk. Hey, and when, like for instance, when somebody's coming out of a coma. The first thing they start to do is they start to sort of masturbate a little bit. There's hey. something about our central nervous systems that we sort of self-stimulate by a matter of sort of automatic, primitive kind of a function. Hey. And so naturally enough, yes, a fetus at a certain age would begin to touch its genitalia. It doesn't actually masturbate. Hey. And the, the interpreter as masturbation, I think, is a little bit uh, presumptuous. Hey. Hey. Is it, yeah, but, uh, you know, so I'm sure, yes, I'm sure they've documented uh, fetuses touching themselves. Hey. 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 Yeah. I've told you before about uh, <clears throat> how I would work it with the coma victim thing, which is, they always say, I, it's all movies and all TV shows. You talk to him. You sit by his bed and you talk to him. You keep talking to him. I don't know what the hell that does. Nothing. Uh, I, Nothing. <laughs> it was like uh, you talk to him. Makes, but in, movie, in movies, you go talk to him. But I, I would just, I would pull up a chair, be, you know, be uh, midnight, I'd be at the hospital. Uh, Dad? Dad, it's, uh, it's your son. It's Adam. <clears throat> Dad? Dad! <laughs> Dad! Oh, Christ. Ah, oh, listen, screw this. Uh, I'm going, I mean, you want Chinese? I'm going, yeah. All right. Uh, Oh, yeah. screw it. I'm People are very it. funny about this stuff, but you know the, the self stimulating really, how, how about a tape recording? <clears throat> like a, you know, yeah. well, I mean, if you got a job, I'm, I'm talking about <sighs> someone's in a coma. I'm just thinking about in a coma. What exactly would talk to them do? I've again, seen it. I see it in all the movies. You I have know. To go talk it, it's to them. again the kind of primitive man stuff. Or, I like that stuff too. He can hear you. He he may not. He feels your presence. There's a lot of that in life, you know. You're in a coma. You're in a coma, right? Yeah. Here, let me tell coma, you. by the means, altered relation to the external environment. Yeah, let me, not a normal let me tell you a definition of coma. Uh, you don't know what the you hell's going right, on. You if, don't if, respond if you, to the external If you had some sense that uh, your loved ones were sitting around your bed, uh, you, you wouldn't be in a coma. Right. Right? If you could identify people, if you knew where you were. Oh, no. yeah. oh you hear your name. And, and by the way. You wake right up. That, that's even, even then being confused, not knowing where you are, not knowing who's you. That's not as bad as coma. That comes, that's, the coma's far deeper than not being able to identify people, not knowing where you are. Mm -hmm. So even if they were awake, right. they still wouldn't know who you were and where they are, sure. nor would they remember it. But the thing I said about the masturbation stuff, I've actually only routinely seen that in, obviously, young males. Hey. Older males aren't as apt to self-stimulate. Hey. Hey. I mean, hi. Hi. Hey. Okay. Uh, older males aren't... The young males got the... Got the Juice going, you know what I'm saying? And so they're, they're what do you mean, like, older males? Like men in their 80s when they're in a coma don't oh, oh, wake oh, up in and a coma. So in a, I, I didn't even forgot why, how coma came up. I just thought I'm now at the point with the show where I just think I bring things up that mean nothing to anybody. Well, I mean, no, I'm with that, but I mean, I just keep making things up. Yes, but no, yes. you said coma. That's yes. right. Hey, and you are at the point where you just keep making things uh, up. Hey, Jacqueline. Uh, yeah. You're 18. Uh huh. What's up? Um. Well, uh, my question is that I've noticed as my breasts have been developing, um, hey. One, hey. Of them, <laughs> one of them has developed a little bit bigger than the other. Hey. By a full, uh, say, cu a cup side difference, or is it that noticeable? Um, it's about a cup size difference. Yeah, that's actually very, very common, Jack. It's real common for there to be a size asymmetry, a directional asymmetry, mm -hmm. uh, this sort of thing. So uh, it's not no something you deal. should be. Yeah, you no shouldn't be worried about it. What's what cup size are you? Um. Well, one's like a double D, one's a D. Hey. Hey. Wow. So yeah, that's, that's, that's just, that, it. Just looks like a big. At the end of the day, it's just a big rack. That's yeah, fine. That's fine. Don't not worry. How big's the rest of you? Huh? How, how tall are you, baby? Um, five two. Who? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, how, low. How much do you weigh? Huh? Uh -oh. How much By do I weigh? Way? Hold on a second. Yeah. Um, it's always that's, like that's, 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 50, that's twenty pounds added right there. You give one more, that's, huh? Let me think about it. And the, how much do I weigh now? Yeah. You've gone up twenty five pounds. Uh -huh. All right, let me try this. Where's your Jacqueline? Hey. But she has a hot name, Jacqueline. Uh huh. How much do you weigh? How much I weigh? One twenty five. Oh, uh. mm, when I hear the how much do I weigh sort of uh, shoehorned into 125, now I'm at 137. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't weigh 137. Uh, I don't uh, weigh 137. I know, you're reading your driver's license, but I'm looking at the scale. How tall are you again? Five? Five two. Five two. Mm -hmm. Pretty short. All right. That's not, she's small. She's just right. 
She was just right if she wasn't lying about 125. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, look, you got a nice ride. Take it home and use it. Take it home and use it. Hey. Hey. Uh, no, you're fine, baby doll. Little asymmetry. Well, but by the way, women are constantly with the you know inverted nipples and the stretch marks and the uh, asymmetry in the breast. Like guys care. Like guys don't and know. By the way, they don't even think care. Think a percentile difference. The difference between a B and a C, D and a double D. Not as much of a percentile difference. Right. One's fifty percent more basically, right. and uh, the other's ten percent more. Exactly. Thank you. Hey. All right, uh, Engineer Chris. Yeah, wake up, buddy. What did you hey. do? Uh, did you eat a bunch of turkey before you came in today? No. You got like a like a tryptophan. No, no, he's high tonight. No, no, no. He's, oh, he's on high? his game. Yeah. yeah. Hi. I'm good. All right, you're cool. Yeah, he's How are you excited. doing on the uh, ranchero music? That's good. Are oh, you good? Really? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay. He does a good hi. Okay. Uh, let's play a little uh, Aces uh, Ranchero well, here's a Mexican play, accordion a, a, a countdown. Caller wants to play with us. Here. Oh, wants to play with us. Uh oh, all right. and here's wait first a little history. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, all right. So a little history of the Ranchero yeah. countdown. Yeah. Brian. Yes. What's happening? In hey, twenty one. Uh, how'd you get the idea for the Ranchero Ranchero Mexican music countdown? Well, I'll t I'll, I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how that came about. Uh, no harp music. Uh, we, uh, I've uh, obviously worked in the uh, construction field in uh, Southern California for many, many years with my uh, Mexican brethren. And uh, I don't know if uh, a lot of people understand, like, this sort of breakdown in uh, at least the Southern California area when it comes to doing that kind of work, which is you don't work with black guys, you don't work with Asian guys, you don't work with Jewish... Oh, if, if God you, knows you don't work with Jewish if guys. If you do construction. If you do construction. But masonry... That must be the Jewish guys. Uh, yeah, that's my, mainly the mainly the uh, Hasids uh, do mason. Yeah, they love they love mixing up a a, a batch of uh, mortar. <laughs> now, if you work in the construction field in Southern California, you work with Latino guys. Now, I'm not saying Mexican because I work with guys from you know El, El Salvador, Salvador and <laughs> Nicaragua and uh, all all parts. Uh, but. Uh, and by the way, the white guys just call them all Mexican, and then they get mad. But the point is, is uh, ranchero music is the uh, music of choice on the construction site, and uh, that's all you hear. So yeah, you realize that then uh, after listening to it for a while, accordion becomes a, a strong theme. How, how long were you listening? What's a while? Many years. Okay. Many painful, painful years. Yeah. And then you realize that uh, this is the world's most annoying music, and then it's uh, made more annoying by the most annoying uh, instrument, the accordion. And then, while we were sitting around the writer's room, I uh, just decided... Uh, at that, Jimmy Kimmel Live. At, at Jimmy Kimmel Live, you know, in lieu of writing jokes, <laughs> I decided, uh, look, I, I just, just arbitrarily, you flip on the radio. We leave it on the Spanish station. You uh, flip Spanish. it on... Spanish. Uh, the Mexican station, the well, Spanish speaking station. Uh, How dare you, Drew? Just to let you know, me Adam, into a non racist. Yes. The caller, Brian, uh, hung up about right, right when you started your story, pretty much. No, no, he didn't, because he, he responded to us a couple times, but there was a hang up noise. That's why and we then, put him yeah, on hold. And, and Ziggy checked, and he's, he's gone. I, I, uh, whatever. Maybe he didn't like your, I don't know. Maybe he didn't like your explanation. I want to hear the rest of the story. Maybe he Hi. Wanted, I don't know. Hi. All right. Engineer Anderson. I just wanted to let you know. Thanks, buddy. You, you really, I'll tell you, you're at the top of my Christmas list. More underwear? Just quiet down, please. Jesus Christ. I, I swear to God. Oh, if I had any energy at all, it'd be great. We'd just fire everyone. All right, where am I, Drew? Hi. Hi. I, I know the guy's off the line, Aaron, so I put him on hold. I can. I have a screen in front of me. We, we, we heard, the, we heard that. the clicking. That's why thank, I put Thanks for undermining the story. I Hi. appreciate that. Uh, so, you were sitting around the writer's table. You leave it on the Mexican station. You're mad at me for saying Spanish. Yeah. And? And uh, we start flipping it on and off and taking taking some bets. And that's how the uh, Ranchero bets Accordion Countdown. Bets on how soon before they hear an accordion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's where it started. And now, right. uh, now, now it comes to you. Now we share it with America. And a call wants to share it with us. All right. You want to play along? Matt? Yeah. All right. You want to play along? Yeah, I want to play. All right. Give us uh, a bet. A bet. All right. I didn't call in to be conservative, so I'm going to go with seven seconds. Seven oh, seconds. bold. I am going bold today. Well, I'm going to counter with a bold move. Instant. Instant. <laughs> instant. Drew's, uh, Drew, by the way, uh, dead nuts on uh, last night. Yep, with three seconds. Three no, point it was two. five seconds. Oh, five, right. It was five seconds, and it really probably won about 5.3, but uh, that's not much. You know, it's not, it's not like we're, it's not the Olympic trials here. Mm -hmm. That point three, 
not much. All right, so uh, Drew has the instant. Uh, Matt has seven, seven. seconds. I'm going to go bold. I'm going to go crazy bold. You ready? You ready for this? Okay. Ready well, for this? Uh, yeah. No accordion. Hey! Zero oh. accordion. Uh, Zero wow. accordion. What that do you is, think of that? Whew. That's bold. That's crazy. You want to talk huevos. Uh, huevos. He's lost it. Yeah. That's a, that's a crazy. He's going to drop trout. He'll drop trout. This guy's going to drop trout, Chris. We'll Watch out. Trout. He will drop trout. All right, Chris. Yeah. You, uh, you poised? I'm going to count you in. In five, four. Three, two, one, go. There you go. All right. Five. 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 <laughs> Five seconds. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, caller Matt has won. Yes, he has. I got it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you made, you did. It was cutting out on my phone. Oh, you know. No, here it is. Yeah. 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 That's you, buddy. Five seconds. And uh, since you picked uh, seven. seven and Drew picked immediate and I picked uh, zero, you're uh, right on. You know, we've done this uh, twice with callers and they've won each time, Drew. I don't know what that says about us. Hi. Yes. All right. So we uh, should we take a call? Should we take a break? What do you want to do? Uh, call. Let's see. Who's Molested left the longest? Five. Uh, let's take six. Been up there six years. Married for six months and also wants oral sex six techniques. 60 minutes, line six. Let's do that. What about 80, 80 minutes? minutes yeah. 80 minutes, line six. Are you want 80 minutes or 60 minutes? I want minutes? 80 minutes. 80. 80. Okay. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. Sarah. Hi. You're, uh, hi. Hi. You're 13. What's up? Um, I was molested when I was five, and... Ever since, like, last year, I just, like, got really sexual and started doing a lot of really dumb stuff. And I wanted to know if it had anything to do with what happened to me when I was little. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why don't you stop doing that dumb stuff? <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of people told me. Well, you know what's interesting, Sarah? I had a conversation with a patient tonight who was doing a lot of dumb stuff. And she was beginning to engage in a treatment process where she trusted people to help her. And she was starting to open up to the emotional pain that she'd been suffering. And she said something very interesting to me tonight. She goes, you know, I've noticed a decreased drive to do the, what you guys are calling those self-destructive things, hey. so-called self-destructive hey. things, that literally when you, got, when you get engaged in a process of recovery or treatment, the drive to do these stupid things goes down. They're not so satisfying. They're not so gratifying. You're not driven to do them because the drive, the, the, the sort of the source of that energy is being dealt with, being diminished. So how about doing something before you actually do something that is permanently harmful? And, and by the way, these behaviors don't tend to cause you to feel good about yourself. Hey. And how yeah. about doing things that actually make you feel good? Because there is such a thing. Not just feel better, not just give you relief, but actually make you feel good. I use, like, marijuana. It just, like, makes you feel, like, you can't stop laughing forever. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Oh, boy. Did you hear? Did you hear anything I said? No, no. no. Look, I'm, <laughs> look uh, I'm shifting from. Don't get pregnant. Yeah, what it is is you. You want to come in and uh, you know remodel the house, put yeah. a little faux paint. Yes, on the, I do. Uh, on, on the nice wall, nice appliances. Put back some in new there. appliances on. I'm looking to board up the windows. Yeah. So uh, so the place doesn't blow blow through when the when the hurricane's coming. The hurricane's coming. Hurricanes, yeah. we're in the middle of it. All right. The point is, is uh, I'm on damage control. Yeah. I, I just don't want to blow out the windows. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's what I'm going into with uh, Sarah here. Sarah. Yeah. All right. Here's the deal. You're 13. Hi. Hi. You, you're gonna you're gonna have years of uh, look. You don't have to listen to anything I say, and I'm sure you're not. And you know, I am. I'm just trying to get some advice because my mom says that I'm an out of control teenager. Well, you, no, know, you you something has horrible happened to you that's driving you to harm yourself to do destructive things. And I know they don't seem destructive. They seem like things that make you feel better, but yeah. they're not going to make you feel good. Here, here's here's the thing too, uh, which is life is challenging enough without hobbling yourself by doing really a stupid effed up things every 10 minutes you know it, it's difficult enough to you know get along to succeed to make the right decisions to 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 do what it's going to take to have the kind of life that you can be happy with and proud of and so on and so forth and when you're i mean here okay here's what i want to say drew the people i i know 
that were successful and the ones that were unsuccessful, it wasn't really about IQ and it wasn't really about calories burnt or anything like that. It was the ones that were unsuccessful had to keep derailing and sabotaging right. and effing themselves up. But yeah, and it's like it's um. It's it's hard enough. It's like it's like it's hard enough to run the marathon. It's another thing if you're gonna want to uh, drink a six pack and eat a bucket of chicken while you're doing it and take off one shoe. It, it's gonna be it, it's you're, you're taking make it, it you're taking a challenging thing and making it impossible. But the other thing, the kinds of things that the Sarahs of the world like to do tend to, in retrospect, cause very intense shame, mm -hmm. and that shame tends to cause you to want to do more of these things. Hey. As opposed to doing things that actually make you feel good about yourself because you're taking care of yourself. Right. And uh, it's what I call a shame spiral. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the, uh, and by the way, I don't know a ton about World War II, but uh, the SS. Yeah. Shame, shame spiral. spiral? Yeah. Is that what that was? Yeah. yeah. Okay. SS. Because I would see a lot of that on the uh, History Channel. I don't, I don't know. I thought it was something that had to do with Hitler. Well, I didn't know it was shame spiral. The, the point is, is... Is one, it's once you start screwing up, once you start doing drugs, once you start screwing around with guys, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Mm -hmm. It's that sort of, you know, it's that sort of stepping stone stuff. Once you start with the petty crimes, it's easier. Then you're breaking into someone's house, next thing you know, you're stabbing someone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything, everything works that way. You step it up. You just, you just ratchet it up, ratchet it up because, slowly, because, and because it works. Because you're looking for, you're looking to deal with things through behaviors that aren't actually dealing with the problems. Right. Sarah. Yeah. Let's uh, get yourself, please, uh, get yourself a little help for what happened to you when you were younger and see if things don't come into focus a little I more clearly. I just don't like to talk about it. Of course not. Well, well, that's okay. why you do it your way. I know. But here, here's, here's the deal. Um, your plan in life is, is perfect if you're going to get killed on a moped when you're 15. <laughs> you know what I mean, but it's it's a great plan. It's perfect. Like it, it's whole things. Like if I if I had a magic uh, if I had a crystal ball and realized at thirteen I was going to get killed on a moped when I was fifteen, I would just start eating candy. I would never study. I wouldn't go to the therapist. You raise and an interesting point. I That's want. probably why nature put those kinds of mechanisms in place. Because in nature, when, when things were man was natural and didn't have toxins, you feel toxins in your body. Toxins, we average life life expectancy was about eighteen to twenty two. Right. And so you can go ahead and just go nuts and do whatever you want and reproduce quickly and then you'll be dead. Right. And that's what these folks do. They reproduce quickly and then they're dead uh, not because a lion kills them but because uh, you know they get a bad rig and uh, they get uh, infected from some heroin mm -hmm. they're slamming. So here well a lot of street I sound like Beretta there for so you take that to the bank. The, the the point is is your plan's good if you're going to get cleaned out in 5 years or 3 years or 2 years. It's not good if you want to have a family, have a life, have a career, right. so on and so forth. Okay. Let's take a quick break. And your Chris, ready to take a break? Hey. Uh, hey. Come Try on, Fonzie, give it a go. Hey. Uh, no, hey. Not, hey. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, hey. Hey. Okay, you ready to take a break, Chris? Hey. No, no I. Not I. Hi. Hey. Hey. Crapping and know kicking. If he's with yeah. us or not. <laughs> Remember the, the, the 1300 height you said? Yeah. I need one more. You ready to take, there you go. You're ready to take a break? Right, hold on, I got a cue. You ready to take a break? Hey. Yeah. All right, after this. 1 800 call the line. Love 191. Call, call. Call the line. Yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. -er. Oh, it's that good time of the year. Everyone's going to be eating, going to be watching football. Oh, yeah. You know what's nice, too, is uh, I never used to get paid on uh, holidays. <sighs> Swinging a hammer. Hey, you know, people don't really realize how that works and how much it sucks. It's like. You got that thing where it's like, well, I can afford to take Thanksgiving off, but I'm going back on Friday. And you just, uh, how much do you really enjoy uh, sitting home not getting paid, especially when you're living paycheck to paycheck? Nice getting paid. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Chris, you getting paid? Yeah. Uh, uh, excuse me? Hey. Oh. Hey. You do. You get paid. You get a paid 
paid for Thanksgiving? Uh, no, I'm part time, so. Yeah. So you don't get paid. If I work the day, yeah, I mean I'll get paid. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> write that down. So you're saying if you work, well, so, it's not okay. Uh, well, hold on, I'm confused. Tonight, holiday, you, so. tonight you're not getting paid, then, right? I'm sorry, it's not a paid holiday. Not a paid holiday. Okay. All right. So you don't get paid, but if you did come in at like four o'clock, <laughs> exactly. you get paid. Yeah. Now let me show you this: if if you work for an hour, you just you get paid for one hour, right? Right. How about okay. work for two? Two. Oh, two, two. Right. Okay, good. That's, oh, hi. That's called. Question. That's called. Chris calls that golden tap. All right, Brandon. Yeah. What's happening? Um, I recently spied on my girl. It's so funny because uh, K Rock is so cheap. I was like, what? They're paying Chris for uh, for a holiday, and then uh, then then, but then it came into focus. Yeah. No, no. And it, look, if we were bigger men, we'd pay him out of our own pocket, but we're just not. Brandon, yeah, you're 19. Yeah. All right. Um, I Here we go. I recently um, caught, spied on my girlfriend, and I caught them having sex. Mm. Who's them? Uh, my brother and my girlfriend. Perfectly normal. Perfectly healthy. Why did you come in screaming and... Um, Ew, Drew, would you have? Huh? It's uh, hard to predict. Oh, yeah, I would have lost my mind. Uh, yeah, in some fact. Me too. After feverishly masturbating, I would have lost yeah. my mind. It's like, I, was, I, like, I want to know how I can like, confront it's, them. How you can confront them? All right, hold on, let me talk Let's to you. The guy hey, sounds is, squirrely, but it's got to be bogus because there's no question. It's bogus. Yeah. He's bogus. Confront them. Brandon. Yeah. You know what uh, you share with the word uh, bogus? Huh? You, 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 both, you both start with a B. Yeah. Bogus and Brandon. Bogus Brandon. No, I, like, I want to know how to confront them. It's... Yeah, how to confront in, in Loveline non -question. World is a non-question is a bogus You're not question. asking a question. This is bogus. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, listen to all you uh, jack-offs that are home and do that. Why do you think... Every, you always say people were molested. Or you always think people... Uh, look, I, if we weren't right every time, I wouldn't do it. Same with the bogus. We know when it's bogus. We know. Yeah, I mean, not 100%, but that was a non-question. Think about the, the, the sort of nuanced questions that people ask, you know, and the, and the sort of specificity. No yes. one who has a real question ever calls up and hey. says, how do I confront fill-in-the-blank? And again, it's a non, -question. non non question. Thanks. And look, uh, look. Here's our only rule with the the boguosity. <laughs> make it good. Uh, make it good. And then when we bust you, be man enough. Don't to... just hang up. Just go. Hi. Yes, Anthony. Hello. Seventeen. And yep. by the way, uh, there's another thing. Bring something to the goddamn table. If you're gonna do a bogus, if you're gonna make a bogus phone call, then make one. Like do really, de develop it. Develop it and, 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 and you know, fight back the tears. <laughs> it, it'll be like... No, no, wait, no. I don't encourage them. You don't hey. encourage them to go to the point where well, we no, have no I don't, option. I don't want you to go, I saw my father shoot himself 20 minutes yeah, ago. You can't, you can't no, you unfairly can't load the deck against no, us. No, no, no. We have no, to go along no, with it no matter what. Right. None of those, none of those AIDS calls. Right. No uh, Drew's a genius call. Nothing yeah, so nothing fantastic like that, that no, we no, can't no. believe it. Right. Um, but don't give that... Uh, I walk... I saw my... I saw my 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 brother no, no, hunting no, no. my girlfriend. Here it is. I was alone in my friend's house. He, I was waiting for him after school, and his mom came home, and then she came downstairs without any clothes on, yeah. and then she tried to give me a BJ. Yeah. I want to know. Should I tell my friend? Should I, should tell I him? confront him about should I tell it? Tell him. I filmed it. Should I show him the, the yeah. film? And then I was like, this one too. Everyone's such an idiot. They're like, yeah. What was what what was she wearing? Uh. <laughs> uh. Uh, what room are you in? Uh, it was wallpaper. Uh, uh, we watch it on TV. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. No, first is, uh, 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 how dare you? <laughs> what was she wearing? <laughs> what was she wearing? Repeat the question. Really? Huh? You what was come, she wearing? You couldn't go huh? with jeans and a t-shirt? You, 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 you got you to gotta, uh, convene for that one? Can't, living room not going to, nothing? Then, not, where you? Okay. You ready to go? Yeah. All right. Anthony? Hello? You're 17? Yeah, I have a Jimmy in Florida. Beautiful, brother. All right. All right uh, police say a man bit an officer and his dog Friday after trying to stiff a cab driver on an early morning fare. So-and-so uh, uh, was charged Friday with assaulting a police officer, resisting arrest, and stealing. 
A uh, police officer said the suspect broke the skin of an officer's hand when he bit him. The man then nearly bit the ear off the police dog. Wow. Well, that's speed. That's speed. You mean you mean you you don't bite police dogs unless you're unless either you're high or super hungry. Yeah, or it's just it's super super psychotic or super super manic. That's speed. Psychotic. Police but, dog, uh, Florida, but Germany. Yeah, seems like uh, Germany sort of the uh, home of of dogs that do your bidding. You know. Yeah. Oh, huh. I can't. It's a cab. tough one. Cab. No. No. Early help. morning cab. Early, Early morning, morning cab. cab goes yeah. Florida. Yeah, they don't have. Goes Florida? Yeah, it goes Florida. Yeah, because guys all been right, up Florida. all night. Yeah, up Florida. all night with the speed. Yeah, yeah. Florida. Florida? Florida? Yeah. It's yeah, a very Anthony, tough one. Anthony, we're going Florida. Oh, you got Germany. Oh, oh good man. One. Good one. Brutal. And going into the long holiday weekend with that kind of a slump. Speed. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna droop. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna Okay. Hey Anthony. Yeah. Thank you. Are you guys gonna be playing any more uh Aces According Countdown tonight? <laughs> Yeah. To play. Why, you want to play? Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm going to put you on hold, Anthony. All right. And uh, we're going to take a commercial break. And then All we'll right. come back. You're going to join in play and see if you can go two for two. And by the way, mm -hmm. you could be the first caller in Loveline history. And the show's been on for 20 years or maybe more in Southern California, at least. Although Aces According to Countdown is relatively new. <laughs> but still, technically, the first Loveline caller in as long as the show's been on the air is to win not only Germany or Florida, but Aces, Mexican, Ranchero, Accordion, Countdown in the same evening. That would be an honor. It's huge. It's not guaranteed. We're good. The odds are stacked against you, my friend. But you could walk away wearing the double-sided the double -sided crown. Are you ready to take that challenge? Yeah, for sure. Between All right. Of each. <laughs> What's that? The red and the white crown. <laughs> there we go. Let's go. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with uh, Aces, Ranchero, Mexican, Accordion, Countdown after this. One eight hundred love one nine one. Love line. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. We'll be right back. Yeah, woo! Get it on. Gotta get it on. Gonna get it on. I'll tell you uh, what, there, kiddies. Uh, next week, uh, Mark McGrath is going to be in here. And uh, also uh, Dana Devon is going to be in here. Seems like uh, Devon, but I think it's Devon from uh, Extra. They make a nice uh, team. Mark is, uh, of course, from Sugar Ray. And Mark's one of these guys that uh, you would love to hate him, except for he's the nicest he's guy in the guy. world. Yeah, yeah. Super nice. Yeah. Yes? And smart. And super smart. He really uh, always uh, makes me feel like he could do this job anytime he wanted to. <laughs> and I'll just go... Uh, co-host uh, extra uh i don't know by the way uh, if you're this way drew but uh, those shows are uh guilty pleasures for me oh no, 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 no. there's there's my there's, wife watches those. There's certain shows like i don't gravitate to and then there's there's all the access hollywoods and the extras and it's like uh julia roberts is giving birth to twins what she's eating and i'm like oh, look, i gotta find out what she's what's eating. up with britney what's up with britney <laughs> Yeah, well, I got to find out what's up with Britney, and then I get angry. Yeah. Nothing's up with Britney. No, I can't. Uh, she's lip syncing. She's got cankles. I really don't like those shows. Hmm? I will not tell Mark this, but I, don't, I really don't like those shows. I, I find them uh, destructive to the fabric of society. Yeah, yeah. Because here's, 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 here's what ends up going on. I think people just sit home. They, they watch uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, $40 million for an next film, How the Starlet Gets in Shape. And then the guy just turns and looks at his fat wife on the sofa with a hole in it and goes, I'm going to kill you. you Here's bitch. why I would like those shows. If somebody said, let's sit, let's sit somebody down and have a, a conversation about who that person actually is, now I'm in. After Extra, look forward to Boring with Dr. Drew. But I see, I'd find that interesting. Blah. Wouldn't you? Bob Pat O'Brien. Who is that person? Who is that person? Yeah. J-Lo and Mark Anthony. Yeah. Don't you think, by the way, that that was an interesting story that people missed? That uh, there was all this Ben Jen stuff, and then she dumps him mid-engagement, and he gets married to somebody else. Yeah. That's brutal. Yeah. Right? No. No? Nobody, Nobody cares. cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. I mean, no one cares what happens to Benny. Yeah, the Sox won the World Series, and he's banging Jennifer Garner. He's but, just, he's just no, no, I feel bad for him, but, but he, he's... Uh, whatever. Relax. 
You don't watch those shows, remember? I know. All right, so start acting like it. Anthony? Yes. 17? No, no, Anthony's playing a Ranchero Countdown. I know, I know. <laughs> I was just resetting, Drew. Okay. Anthony? Yes. So you ready to play a little uh, Aces uh, Mexican Accordion Ranchero Countdown? Totally. Okay. Now, what is your uh, what is your pick uh, before the accordion comes in? Uh, I'm thinking three seconds right now. Uh, it's tough to work around three. You go under, you go over. It's tough. I've got an extra bold ten. You know what three is? Three is like a th three is like a, a fence that comes up. Three. Hold on a second. Yes, three is a, a fence through yep. that comes up to your chest. Do you go over it or do you try to crawl under? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, now when the I'm when, going over. when I'm the thing's leaving. up when when the bar's up high, you just slide under, and when it's down low, you just step under. But three, three is the one that's right in the middle. Yep. You going under that fence? You going over that? I'm fence. going over. You going over that yep. fence? Yep. What are you going for? Ten. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness gracious, dear Lord, Drew. You gotta take your temperature. <laughs> You're going ten. Yeah. I'm going five. Okay. You got that marked down? Got it. All right. Ten. Five. What do you do? Three. He did go. three. Anthony? Yeah. Are you ready to play? For sure. All right. You ready there, uh, Chris? I'm ready. All right. Three, two. No, no, no. I gotta reset. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do this right. We're gonna wait till we get to uh, thirty. To thirty. Okay. Two, three, two, one, go. Yeah, that's a. Yeah, that's that's a that's, a, that, 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 that's made it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost instant. So Adam wins. Oh no, he wins. No, he got Anthony the three. Wins. Why do we have to hear the same songs over and over? It's There's a billion the ranchero it's not songs. The same songs. We have heard that one before. Let me explain I guarantee something. you. There's a billion ranchero songs. Like McDonald's has sold a billion hamburgers, That's but right. it's the same burger. Yeah, I know, but we've yeah, actually heard this one before. No, we right? have not. Oh, no, we yes. have not. I don't know. Turn it up. Turn it up because I'll, I'm going to translate this song. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Right, right now, the young man he's singing. He's lamenting. He's lamenting the fact that uh, his father ever got him an accordion on his uh, fifth birthday and forced him to play it. That's it? Yeah, I, had a, I want another big ending. Uh, big ending. Big ending. That's all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, Anthony. Yeah. You win. You uh, now can uh, show up at your uh, high school, or if you're homeschooled, you can tell your mom. That uh, you're the first person in Love Line history to not only stump Ace and Dr. Drew on the uh, Germany or Florida, but actually clean up in the uh, Ace's Ranchero Accordion countdown as well. God bless you, Anthony. All right. Now, here the young man sings. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, he yelled, kill me. Kill me. I can't stop my hands. God, please kill me. It's like those vampire movies where the guy says, if I get bit... If I get killed, right, you got to promise me. And they're like, but Dad, no. If you see me start to turn, you put a bullet in my head, or I'm going to kill you. That's what that's what he's singing now. Okay. Now he says uh, he, he, wants to, he wants to cut his ears off with a rusty machete so he can stop hearing this goddamn awful music. Yeah, nice. Ha, ha, ha. Jokes on you. He's saying jokes on you. Jokes on you. Kill me. Kill me. Someone in the audience, step up. Now he's begging the sound engineer to come out of the booth and uh, stab him with a drumstick. Yeah. There you go. There it is. That's the... <laughs> no. No, okay, I want to kill myself now. Stop. No. Come on. We get you do it. Oh, my God. What if they played this while people were on hold on the suicide hotline? Oh. Pitching. Well, no calls. People that called in uh, to, to look for jobs would kill themselves. Yes. Yeah? Okay. There you go. Jesse, 21. All right. All right. Jesse. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, and I know people go, uh, "How dare you make fun of that music?" I say, well, well, and I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be culturally insensitive, but that music blows such incredible ass that uh, it's important to make fun of things that suck, no matter what what culture they are. All right, Jesse, what's going Thank on? Thank you. Um, I'm 21, <laughs> and for about the past five months, I've completely lost my sex drive, hey, and I was wondering any? if it's possibly due to birth control. Absolutely. That, that's rather common, in fact. Really? Are, are you on uh, progesterone? Well, I'm on the patch. Which, yeah. Um, is it, or is so the, ever? Yeah, is that the first time you've been on birth control? No, not at all. And I actually, well, I've been on it for a year, and it just started about five months ago. You've been on the patch for a year? Yeah. And you noticed the decreased sex drive five months ago? 
Yeah. Had you been on birth control before this year? Yes, I was on the pill for four years. What pill were you on? Um, it was a generic one, like really low dose. I'm sorry, I don't remember. All right. All right. Help so, yes, for you, there's, there's, yes, the birth control pills can often do this. Usually the lower dose estrogen pills are the ones that tend to do it, but for some women, the estrogen itself can drop your sex drive. Obviously, mood can do it, other medical conditions, other medications also. So, because Adam won't let me speak to you, I don't know if those things are relevant. So, here Ed. we go. Ed? Yeah. 23. There Ed's been on hold for 74 minutes. I feel bad. Oh. All right. And it's now. Oh, how are you doing? Good, Ed. Uh, let's see, you've been married for six months, and he won oral sex uh, techniques? Well, you see, I didn't really convey the idea correctly. What what the situation is, oh, I have what, what, what I'm going to need you to do for me uh, right now, okay, so go Sergeant ahead and uh, Friday. go ahead and put my penis in your mouth, okay, and start blowing, please. Okay, f okay right now. All right, go ahead, uh, Ed. Go ahead. All right, yeah, I've been been trying and trying. been with my wife for about five years. i gotten recently married. See what the problem is. I have uh, I have trouble getting her to climax with just clitoral stimulation. Mm -hmm. So what I tried was actually blowing in her vagina, and mm -hmm. she blew around the room like a balloon. <laughs> and That's I'm nice. Eh? How, That's <laughs> nice. I'm wondering how you uh, how you stop something like that. Uh, Seventy four minutes on hold for, that, for huh? that. Wow. Speaking of blowing, yeah, <laughs> Ed, I'll tell you. I'll give you this. Um, Perseverance. You're borderline retarded, but you have, you're tenacious. You're yes. like a pit bull. 74 minutes on hold for that. God love you, Ed. You know how uh, long I've been waiting to do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least 74 minutes. Hey, there, there actually, there actually was a case. There yeah. actually was a case of a woman who got her vagina blown into and got an air embolism into the vein around the uterus and mm -hmm. died. That's how my great grandmother forward. went. Uh, did Ed, you yes. Blow around the room like a balloon? All yeah. right, Ed. What do you what do you what do you want what do you want to know about crank anchors? And if you say you uh, want to make calls, I'm going to kill myself. No, no. I want you to take Jim Florentine off the leash. Think think about the terrorizing telemarketers on crank anchors. All right, buddy. Okay. What, do you what does that mean exactly? Uh, Jim Florentine is a special lad. Oh yeah. And uh, as well as Bobby Fletcher, the guy belches all the time. He also releases uh, CDs, and I'm not sure what take him off the leash means. We just let him do what he do wants other to stuff, do. Yeah, yeah I, uh, whatever. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. All right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. This hour brought to you in part by Axe. Experience the Axe Effect. Well, that's the show. Is that okay with you, Engineer Chris? Hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's buddy. been a good night. All right, so good let's just uh, make sure we're squared off for tomorrow. It's a paid vacation for Engineer Chris if he comes in and works. <laughs> if not, <laughs> it's it's not. Yeah. All right, but I'm with you. I would choose to look at it as a paid vacation where I chose not to work, therefore I didn't get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, I want to thank uh, Engineer Chris for uh, putting up with all the surfs and uh, having a uh, delightful time with us uh, all this week. I want to thank uh, Engineer Michelle, who was uh, in here. Well, it seems like it's been 100 years. Uh, I'm not sure when she was in here last, but I'll thank her anyway. I want to thank Junior, 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 Junior. Woo! <laughs> junior, 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 uh, junior producer Lauren has been doing a wonderful job on her game, by the way. Soup to nuts. Soup to nuts. I'll tell you, on her game, a renewed, invigorated uh, producer Lauren. Or I should say, junior, junior, junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I want to thank uh, producer Ann, who doesn't need to improve her game. I want to thank uh, Engineer Anderson for uh, being the uh, Liberace of the potentiometers. And uh, Zeke, the phone screener, and Brian, the phone screener. Wait, what did I say? Ziggy. Ziggy. Sorry. All right. I screwed up. So, sorry, Ziggy. Until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I don't believe you've been dating anybody. You're way too squirrely. Long time listener, first time caller. I don't believe it's a thing either. <laughs> Squirrely, buddy. This has been.
Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or the station. The producer for Love Line is Annie Gold. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.